Okay, now let's talk about inverse sine and inverse cosine. And if you're looking at the, the printed notes, it says this. The calculator tells us that the sine of a 40 degree angle is 0.6428. Let's take a look at that. Here's the calculator, and if we type in sine of 40, it tells us 0.6428. Really, 0 0.6427876097, and those digits would go on and on, but rounded to four decimal places, 0.6428. Okay, so we say the sine of a 40 degree angle is 0.6428, and mathematically we write it like this sine of 40 degrees, and it's also sometimes pretty common to put a parentheses like this, sine of 40 degrees is equal to 0.6428. And again, this is not multiplication. This is not sine times 40. This is the sine of a 40 degree angle, and it's equal to this number, 0.6428. Now we can take this statement this statement in English here, or this mathematical statement, and we can invert it. Instead of saying the sine of a 40 degree angle is 0.6428, we can say the angle whose sine is 0.6428 is 40 degrees. And mathematically, we would write that like this. The inverse sine of 0.6428 is equal to 40 degrees. So in this case, we have the sine of the angle here, and this is the angle. Now on the calculator, the inverse sine would look like this. The, uh, on this calculator, the inverse sine is the second function on the sine key. So I click second sine, and it says inverse sine, and I type in 0.6428, and hit enter, and it should say 40 degrees. Now that came out to 40.00 0.092673. So on the calculator, we get the inverse sine of 0.6428 is 40. Let me write this down as I'm going to make I'm going to make a comment. 0 0.00092673. Now this is not exactly 40 degrees, and the reason is is because this number right here, when we did this calculation, remember we rounded this. That really went on 0.6427 something. It went on and on and on. This to four digits is 0.6428. So if we put in this to four digits, we get a number out here that is accurate to four digits. Look, this is really 40.001 if we rounded there. But we have four digits of accuracy on both sides there, which makes sense. If we put in this to four digits accuracy, we would expect this to about four digits of accuracy. And real quick, let's look at the cosine. The cosine works the same way. If we say cosine, and you could use any number here, but the cosine of 40 degree angle is 0.766. And if I say the inverse cosine, and on this calculator, that's the second function on the cosine key, that's the inverse cosine of 0.766, that should give me something real close to 40 degrees. And there it is. And so there you see that written, the cosine of 40 degrees is 0.766. The inverse cosine of 0.766 is 40 degrees. Now, a quick comment, the notation here, this little negative 1, again, is not an exponent. That's the standard notation for an inverse function. That is not the same thing as cosine of 0.766 to the power of negative 1. Interpret this, when you read this, interpret it as the inverse cosine. So we have the cosine and the inverse cosine, and that's the same notation we use for inverse functions, a little negative one that looks like an exponent, but is not. Do not mentally interpret that as an exponent. That's an inverse function. To avoid the ambiguity, because if we're dealing with inverse functions, remember we have some function x and the inverse function of x, and this looks like f, f to the negative one or a reciprocal, to, to avoid that possible confusion of thinking of this as an exponent, sometimes you see this. You see the cosine and the arc cosine. And the cosine would be just as we've talked about, and the arc cosine is just another way to write inverse cosine. So you could say the cosine of 40 degrees is 0.766, and the arc cosine of 
point seven six six is forty degrees. This is just another way to write this without using the little negative one that might be misinterpreted as an exponent. So arc cosine means the same thing as inverse cosine and arc sine means the same thing as inverse sine. And some exercises here. Find the angle whose sine is 0.2, the angle whose sine is 0.82, and so on. These you need a calculator for. You typically can't do problems like this without a calculator unless it happens to be a number that you know. Like you know that the sine of 30 degrees is 0.5 so if you're asked to find the angle whose sine is 0.5, you might know that that is 30 degrees. But for the most part, you don't necessarily know these values for sine and cosine for any angle. So it's expected that you use a calculator for problems like this. So you can type these into the calculator or just watch as I do it and write the answers in the notes. So this is real simple. Find the angle whose sine is 0.2. We just do the inverse sine of 0.2 and there it is 11.5 round that to 11.54 degrees find the angle whose sine is 0.82 we do inverse sine of 0.82 and it comes out to 55.08 and find the angle whose cosine is 0.15 this is cosine now so we do inverse cosine 0.15 and we get 81.37 degrees and find the angle whose cosine is 0.99 so inverse cosine of 0.99 is 8.1, we'll round that to 8.11 degrees.